Hello, it is Diane with Diane's Blue Hearts and Butterflies.com. And uh, the host for my local stamp class for um, August wanted to have some tips on using vellum to make cards. And so I uh, prepared the class for two ways of showing some different things with how to use vellum. Now, I wanted to, I did show in my class, but I wanted to show kind of here. I don't know if you can tell, but this is a piece of vellum that I have had for many years that I got from a different store a long time ago. And it's very, very flimsy compared to the vellum cardstock that is from start Stampin' Up. Um, when I try to stand this other one up, it just doesn't have the uh, thickness and it's not as translucent either. You can see there versus here, you can, it's a lot clearer image. So I uh, pointed that out to them. I really like using the Stampin' Up! vellum, especially on um, cards. This makes more of a sturdy card base for a card. It also withstands um, embossing folders and heat embossing better. Now vellum is a non-porous um, product and so if you want to um, stamp on it you will have to use a um, an ink like a Stazon so that it has has kind of an alcohol base that it dries and also if you want to color on it so you could like stamp a, an outline image and if you wanted to color on it you would use the Stampin' Blend markers which are the alcohol based markers and so you'd stamp your image on the front you would color from the back and then you would set it aside to let it finish drying um, so that it would be able to keep that and that's another way to use the vellum I didn't make a card with that example but um, I did want to share that. So there are some ways to use this in many other avenues. Also in my examples that I prepared, I hadn't yet gotten the distressed gold. So I used my regular gold foil that um, I've had for a while and I used that to cut out the pieces. However, I did finally get the distressed gold um, ordered and I used that to make the kits for my class and it gave it a new uh, more patina type look and it was really pretty so I'm using that in the kits for this video also in order to um, glue things on vellum it shows up um, adhesive runner and glue dots and things like that you can kind of see the um, dimensionals that I used to pop up the label here. I tried to use it strategically so it was in the white area and it's white on white wouldn't show as well. But when you are using the detailed die cuts as well as the um, uh, vellum, another thing that I have learned watching some other people is using the silicone craft sheet. This does not, uh, glue doesn't stick to this, so you can use this behind when you're using your glue runner to be able to just wipe off that uh, ink that goes, I mean, the ink, uh, adhesive that goes over. You can use it with the Tombow, you can use it with hot glue, anything like that. And uh, you would use a sponge. You could dedicate a sponge, you can wash this out and then use it again later but you'll want to have a silicone craft sheet and the white glue and a sponge. Now Stampin' Up! sells these in a three pack. They're in big circles. I take and I cut mine in half and then each half I cut into thirds to be able to have these. And they last quite a while. You can use these for sponging your inks as well. Also rubbing the edges of some um, stamped images and cardstock gives it kind of a, an antique type look or helps it to pop better. So I wanted to go through, I also on this one used 
some um, the red and green adhesive back pearls that it actually has um, the gold and silver and some green and red in there. There's um, some people at the class also use these red rhinestones that I had left over. And in the kits, I also included some of the textural elements, which are these wooden pieces. Um, I'll show you that a little bit here later in case they would like to use that to give it a little more texture. And then also some of these um, gold holly leaves um, that are in the catalogs. So I gave them some of these as well to use on their cards for today. So I hope you'll check out my blog at Diane's Blue Hearts and Butterflies.com. It'll have the uh, dimensions for the kits uh, for the pieces that I used and things that I cut out and I'll have pictures of the item um, and then it'll have links to the videos that I'm making for this uh, class. So um, I hope that you'll check that out. Also if you do enjoy the videos that I put out there, if you would subscribe it helps my YouTube channel. Also if you would um, like it and share it as well so that other people might enjoy being able to come over and watch these as well that would be great if you'd like to know when the next time that I upload a video then you could click click on the bell icon and it would let you know notify you when I have uploaded a new video so let's get started with the parts and pieces that you'll need and so on this this is a five and a half by eight and a half piece of vellum. I scored it at four and a quarter. This is old olive cardstock and it is four and a half by six and a half. I did get this um, measurements for this part and the these pieces from a uh, Natalie Lapico, I think is how you pronounce it, I'm not sure. I saw her, a card that she had made um, using the vellum and I really liked that technique. So that's the technique that I'm using, but I'm using um, this uh, stuff. Another thing that the host wanted, was really interested in, she fell in love with this um, Boughs of Holly suite. And so I uh, have the Leaves of Holly stamp set and the Holly Berry dies. And I did use a majority of these products in doing that. I also used um, Very Best Occasions for some of their Christmas stamps for the inside message and then I used a retired set that I have because I really love this thinking of you at Christmas and so that's what I used on my card for that. Um, sorry about that, I meant to share that earlier. Then you'll need a designer series paper. Um, this is from the Bows of Holly Suite, uh, I mean uh, DSP and there's two sides of course on Stampin' Up's uh, cardstock. These are four inches by two and three quarter inches and you'll need two. And then there is a um, white piece that I'm putting the stamping and using to put the message on inside. This one is also four inches by two and three quarter inches. I went ahead and did a bunch of the die cuts. These are out of um, scraps of uh, cardstock that I had, as well as, like I said, those um, elements that can be purchased through Stampin' Up. So this is the um, label die from the Holly Berry dies and it is in Whisper White. I also did the detailed leaf from this, the medium size, not the large. And these are uh, Evening Evergreen and Old Olive. I also cut out a couple of different of the boughs or evergreen leaves that you want to call it and I did cut those out in evening evergreen. The um, berries um, dye I did cut out of real red and then the accent I cut out of that gold distressed and that's going to be glued onto here. And then there's these other elements that like I was saying that I bought from the Stampin' Up! catalogs. Also for this, 
I didn't know what this was for. I had to kind of watch some other people when putting things together. But there's a die that cuts this piece. And what this is, is actually the background that goes behind these leaves. It looks kind of like little wings or something, but um, it does go on here. So I wanted to show you uh, those things and I will uh, put these away for just right now because I did want to share another thing that um, another tip because I, I learned it a long time ago from someone and I don't remember who it was but um, I want to share it again so on normal cardstock when you score this indented score line is where the fibers are kind of cut a little bit with the scoring tool and instead of that creating a bunch bunched up area inside you take and you fold this because these fibers are already kind of cut and it helps you to be able to fold this over and get a more crisp edge when you are um, doing your using your bone folder to burnish the edge it gives a lot more crisp image but on the cardstock on here when I scored it one of them I I tried to fold it with this um, the indention on the outside and it tended to crack because this is thinner than the regular cardstock paper cardstock so what I did is the indention side I folded that on the inside and that gave it a little bit of uh, a fold to use and it didn't crack because the uh, the edge that you're, you're uh, burnishing didn't have that kind of already I don't want to say cut but that area already um, scored so it didn't tend to crack as much and so that's what I did here. So let me put this off to the side and these pieces as well. And I've, in the interest of getting this done a little bit faster, I did go ahead and get some of these pieces done. Now the inside, I did use the, it's the detailed medium sized um, leaf. And I did stamp that in old olive, or stamped it in old olive ink, and then I stamped off, and then I stamped back on. You might even stamp off twice and then do it, and it would make it a lot lighter. And then I stamped with Evening Evergreen the um, sentiment over that. I saw someone else had done that, and I did that on this card as well as the other card that I'm going to show you. And it gave it kind of a really um, interesting effect. So this one I'm going to go ahead um, and do this part, put, start putting some of this together. It's fairly simple. Um, it was just teaching some of the tips and tricks that I wanted. Now you can choose which side of this designer series paper that you want facing out. If you think this is too busy to have showing out with the um, leaves and everything to do, you could always turn this part over and show that side. Or, and then on the back side, you could use the same one or you could flip it over and do a different side. It's up to you. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna add adhesive here. And you can do the regular adhesive for the cardstock. To put this on and it's a fairly large border that I created here and then I'm going to go ahead and do the back side and I'm gonna have the same side facing out and just get that try to hold it up a little bit till I get it where I want it and then I stick it down 
Then I'll put the piece on the inside. And I am using the Seal Plus. I tend to like that um, adhesive runner better. It uh, comes off a little easier for me and doesn't get messed up. So, what, how this one goes together is for this, let me straighten up this vellum piece here. I think I, no, I got it right, I think. All right, so when I went to put this together, this doesn't actually go all the way into the, the scored edge. It's going to come and be, uh, have a border around it. And you're only going to glue on the back side. So what I did was I took and flipped it, made sure that I have the front of this card, little card here on the front. And I found where that border is. And then I took some of the white glue, just put a dab of it out here on your silicone craft sheet. Make sure I've got that straight again. And then I'm just kind of dabbing this in here to thin it out. If it's a little bit thick and you want it a little bit thinner, you could add a little bit of water. I wouldn't add very much and I would probably not want it to be, have some white globs on here very much because those will tend to um, show through as uh, darker spots. Make sure that didn't get moved. And then I took and just walked from this scored middle over that and glued it down. So you'll be able to see where I had it a little bit wetter because it kind of shines or shows through a little bit more. But then when you open it up, you actually have two kind of cards that you're opening. Got a little crooked, but that's what a homemade card is for, right? So let me get some of these pieces out. And I have gone ahead on the little wood embellishment. I went ahead and used my blends and I used the bullet end which is the thinner line and I colored this to look like a more of a berry holly leaf and be able to put this on my card. So I'm going to move these part, pieces apart from each other. The one thing I did go ahead and put the accent on the berries but I wanted to show you how I did the one for the other two leaves on the label. So again, I need to have some more glue. And you can take this uh, sheet and wash it with uh, water and soap later, but you can also just rub it off and peel it off once it's um, dried because it will just peel right off. But since I use my craft sheet for a lot of other things, I go ahead and um, get that through here. All right, and then you'll lay this piece so that it overlaps a little bit on the back side, but it doesn't go all the way to the edge. And then that sticks it through, and you can see that gold coming through there. So you'll want to arrange your pieces kind of how you want them to lay on the card um, front. And I would start with the pieces that are going to be sticking out. I think I'm going to be doing these here may use those on the other card. Um, and then again, since they're the the uh, de delicate or intricate dies, I will want to put the glue on there. You could also cut these out with some adhesive sheet on the back and then just peel that backing off. Um, but I 
and I don't want everything kind of sticking I want a few places so let me just put that there and I could stick that part down put some more glue glue's drying up it's a little warm today and I put this over here on the craft sheet so that I can I'm not getting it all over my um, my paper behind there hoping that I'm in the screen so you can see and then putting that there and then this piece this way and I think I will use the dimensionals again oh, I didn't grab any of the big ones so let's use some of these minis Take the backings off. I heard um, one demonstrator on, I was watching her on YouTube, and she said that um, sometimes she wanted the label without the little, um, this little piece right here, because it was kind of hard since it was hard to glue down. And so she actually took her snips and just trimmed that little white piece off. I'm going to try to see if I can keep it on here. Oh, that came undone a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually take and just put a little dollop, dot, whatever you want to call it, of the white glue over here. Put that back down. Pulled it up because I had my hand on that dimensional that was pulling on it. There we go. And then I'm going to put that over this. Move it up a little bit. And then I'm going to add the berries, the die cut berries over here. And I'm thinking I might put this back over here. This I'm going to use the glue just directly on it. a little bit down here so this one's taking a little bit longer but I want you to be able to kind of see more of the a little bit of the finished now I did want to use the pearls here and you could use the red on here but I'm going to use the gold on it and I'm going to use the take your pick tool, the little spatula end. And I'm just going to put some of these around here. I'll put that 
one there. All right. And so you have kind of a double opening card and using the vellum. And so I hope you enjoyed this and that you will like the video and go over and check out my blog www.dianesblueheartsandbutterflies.com and be able to get the measurements and do the um, make this card or something using these measurements or something I hope and that you'll be able to enjoy it and I um, appreciate your giving me your time to be able to share my love of stamping thank you